reckless, gifted, provocative, irreverent, intelligent, courageous. It's a crazy bag of labels, but over the years, the man at the center of this tale has comfortably worn them all. But in August 2002, singer-songwriter Warren Zevon was tagged with another label, terminally ill. Given just three months to live, he set out to make the record of a lifetime. about my dirty life and times. Yeah. <laughs> that was a little Johnny Cash, but it was great. Give me a little bit of Warren on both lines. I first met Warren Zevon in the late 80s when I moved in next door to him. Is that okay, Warren? Billy, they're all good. I could listen to you do it all night, you know, a million different characters. All right. I quickly joined a long list of people who have fallen under his spell. Let me try one more. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> it's Warren has a huge posse of friends, and when news of his illness got around, all the big guns rode into town. Yeah, the hefe. You in a guitar mood? Yeah, man, let's let's try it. To rock legends like Bruce Springsteen, Jackson Brown, Tom Petty, and Eagles Don Henley, Timothy B. Schmidt, and Joe Walsh, Warren is a much revered maverick. I wanted to be free. Sounds good to me. What about what do I know, right? Yeah, yeah. He's able to mythologize and satirize all in one stroke. Trust me when I tell you I'm not good enough for her. The son of a Russian gangster, Warren spent a hard knock childhood parked at the piano studying Mozart and Brahms. But as a teen, he was seduced by rock and roll. Well, he's just an excitable boy. By the early 70s, Warren's handiwork was in high-profile demand. Linda Ronstadt, Bob Dylan, and Stevie Nicks all covered his songs. He could really, in three minutes, tell you an entire story. Splendid isolation. I don't need no one. I think people should listen to his songs, especially people that want to be great songwriters. It's really how he feels and how he looks at life. And of course, that translates into his writing. With his own albums, Warren began building a cult following. Critics loved him, musicians envied him but he'd have to howl at the moon to really be heard. <laughs> Written on a sea of vodka in 1975, Werewolves of London was an offbeat smash. With his full moon anthem shining worldwide, Warren lunged at rock excess with a vengeance. I'm Mr. Bad Example, take a look at me. He was wild and I think he figures he'd survive to this point uh, what most mortal men would not survive. Years into a world-class binge, Warren hopped off the sauce and onto the wagon in 1980. He made a very courageous statement to the press and said, I've got a drinking problem, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something about it, and he did something about it. A newly sobered Zevon spun his near-death tales into scores of darkly comic songs. The, the Grim Reaper made a cameo in most of them. Poor, poor, pitiful, poor, poor, pitiful. That's always been his humor, you know. Death has been a pervasive theme in everything that he's ever done. This is Warren. This is old Velvet Nose. This is his backstage pass at his concert. It's a skull smoking a cigarette. I was in the house when the house burned down. 
But in the summer of 02, death became more than just a lyrical concern for Warren when he was diagnosed with a rare and deadly form of lung cancer. A few years back, Warren told a reporter, if you're lucky, people like something you do early and something you do just before you drop dead. So when doctors gave him the news, he went straight into the studio to create his sonic so long. This is Warren Zevon's diary of those bittersweet days. We find ourselves here, and, and, and uh, I find myself in a, in a unique position of not being able to complain about my present circumstances, is that I've always been interested in writing about death. You know, Hemingway said, all good stories end in death. to Canada to do a couple of folk shows, and there was some fellow in the gym with me, and I said, what's the elevation here, buddy? Because that was very short of breath. Poor, poor, pitiful me. Poor, poor, pitiful me. My failing is that I've always been a little doctor-phobic. One of my best friends is Stan Golden, my dentist, Dr. Stan, and I, I, I used to say, if Dr. Stan can't, if he can't fix it, call 911, I'm done. And I mentioned to Dr. Stan that I had shortness of breath, and he said, well, we're going to a cardiologist in the morning. And I was lucky, I think, because I got all the news, I got all the progression of tests, you know, all the roller coaster ride of hopes and uh, shocking news in the course of one day. When there's nothing left but you and me in the wind. Oh, sweet dog. Miss Kristen, what are they going to do with you? Documentary. Oh, documentary. That means factual, doesn't it? Well, well. theoretically. <laughs> anything you want to say about me? He's terrific. <laughs> okay, but I want, I want that girl who gives you the Steve McQueen line, the one you have to die for. Castle trying to get a job in a toothpaste commercial. You're my witness, I'm your mutiny. You know that poem I keep reciting to myself when I feel sorry for myself. Yeah. The Rilke poem. Anyone, anyone who has no house now will never have a house. Anyone who's alone will always be. Most of the thing I've ever said to another human being, and there's a microphone on my shirt. Well, 
he's done. <laughs> and your man, another <laughs> grinning, who says, don't worry, and none of it picks up. <laughs> that amazing grace sort of passed you by. You wake up every day and you start to cry. We're kind of in the heart of darkness, the scariest place I could have thought of, of being. But uh, once you get there, you find out that there are really nice, caring people here, and it's not so scary. So that's my message. I'm going to, I think, put you in the chair that has the back. All right. And um, are you short of breath right now? A little bit. A little bit? Can you speak to someone on the telephone without having to stop in the middle and take a breath? Yes. OK. You're down about five and a half pounds. Yeah. Did you know that? No. No? OK. You're a little lighter. I thought it was just the haircut. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, tell me about pain, uh, where you're having it, what parts of your body are hurting, how much pain you're having. Not very much. Not very much? OK, point to where you're having pain. Uh, well, if I wake up or it's been a long time since I've had any medication, and it's just a broad sort of Sometimes there's a little sharper pain in the side, but it's not as specific. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. How about any other place? Well, let's hey, chase wait. these guys out for this part of the discussion. Okay. Are you getting the staggering from this angle, or are you kind of not there? <laughs> Good man. I was reading a biography of Sammy Davis Jr., and it said that even though he was ill when he was diagnosed with cancer, he went out there and he danced Mr. Bojangles even though he was sick, and I thought, OK, I'm going to do it. He likes grades, so it makes my job real easy. Yeah, he went down to Sunday He's the one. This is it. Oh, it's great. These pants look okay, like with this. Is that okay? Sam would go down a size, wouldn't he? <laughs> I love that suit. dug up the grave and filled the cage with her bones. Oh, that's Poo Yorick. <laughs> I knew him, Horatio. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Break a leg in New York with Mr. Leatherman, and then I'll see you Saturday and give a report. All right. Yeah. See you later. If I could get one to Tommy, T-O-M-M-Y. Okay. Okay. That's my friend. Thank you very much. So you actually saw you live on Letterman one time, quite a few years ago. And uh, we're with you all the way. I know your problems right now. So Thank you. You're in my thoughts, so take it easy. I always forget to eat. That's what I keeps know. screwing me up. She went out and got it. I was going to eat it right now. That was Danny. The New Yorker wants to do a piece on you. And they too late. That's you know. That's what I think too. So too late. Time marches on. Time stands still. Time on my hands. Time to kill. We contemplate eternity beneath the vast 
indifferent of heaven. Dead man walking. I don't think I'm in denial about death, but I was in denial about the idea that I was really going to have to go and do 45 minutes of essentially live network television myself. But Dave's been a great friend to me. He's been the best friend my music ever had. Okay. And don't put your, you know, don't blow your voice. That's the main thing. Just mark it. I was concerned about whether I was going to be able to sing uh, or whether I would lose wind or lose my voice, but I believe that everybody who does this, what I do, is an entertainer. Should be, think of themselves as, as an entertainer, a show business entertainer. Tonight, legendary singer, songwriter Warren Seabon. play that oh yeah i know he could play it <laughs> here uh i guess a couple of months ago we all uh, learned that your life has uh, changed radically hasn't it you mean you heard about the flu <laughs> <laughs> yeah kind of about the flu yeah 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 well that's true how did you how did you learn about it and, and what is it and um, how have things been since what was the order of those questions again <laughs> <laughs> entirely up to you any way you want to field them how did I learn about it? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me say that I, I might have made a, a tactical error in not going to a physician for 20 years. <laughs> I see. All right. It was one of those phobias that really didn't pay off. <laughs> from, from your perspective now, do, do you know something about uh, life and death that maybe I don't know now? Not unless I know how much, how much you're supposed to enjoy every sandwich. Mm -hmm. You know. How's your family? They're holding up pretty well. It's tough on them, but they're yeah. holding up pretty well. Yeah. You know, we're a pretty close family, me and my kids. Good. You have the, the two, uh, the boy and the girl? Yeah. Yeah. Good yeah. for you. Let me just say now, thank you for being here, and, and thank you for everything. Thank you. For All right. We'll be right back. Mr. Zuban is going to perform for us. Eternal Thompson Gunner, still wandering through the night. And now it's ten years later, but he still keeps up the fight. In Ireland, in Lebanon, in Palestine, and Berkeley. Patty Hurst heard the burst of a Rowan's Thompson gun. Yes, sir. There you go. Warren Zevon, everybody. Warren, you, enjoy every sandwich. We'll see you tomorrow night. Playing your own wife is a rare opportunity for a show business personality, and I think one that uh, I think one that most uh, performers would take on, but not the easiest thing in the world to do. What was the hardest part about it for you? Saying goodbye. Yeah, yeah, they're all close friends. Here in the hotel, too. It's all like family, 20 years.
I did the thing you're not supposed to do, which is tune into the, what the fans write on the internet. And they're all saying it's like heroic that I won't get treatment. And I think there's something so incredibly morbid about that. You know, I stalled the discussion of having treatment so I could finish the record because I didn't want any drastic alterations in my health other than dying. And, uh, well, I was really kind of shocked and disappointed in people when I read that. That's why he's our hero. Because he won't get treatment. Because, you know, I think it's... I think it's a sin not to want to live. Let's do another bad one, then. Because I like it when the blood drains from Dave's face. <laughs> I may have to beg, borrow, or steal some feelings from you so I can have some feelings too. The past several albums, because of a limited budget and a big ego, I played most of the instruments myself. But there's nothing quite beats if you can get all the musicians together. That's, that's the grand style. Jackson Brown said to me, about 25 years ago, you get by with a little help from your friends. Hey, Billy, just in time. Billy Bob Thornton has a voice that really blends well with me. It's always been a pleasure to work with David Lindley and Jim Keltner. And I've always wanted to work with Ry Cooter. This album I'm doing, I guess, almost exclusively with uh, Jorge Calderon, my oldest friend and, and uh, closest collaborator. Hey, we got a lot of talent. Let's <clears throat> go on that work chant. Yes, huh? let's do that <laughs> chant. It's a unison chant. Ah, 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 we just keep going underneath the solo. Prison Grove is our prison song. Prison is metaphor, prison is, you know, what have you. As we were writing it, Jorge says, uh, the prison is your body. My disease. Some folks have to die too hard. Some folks have to cry too hard. Take one Look at the prison yard. Goodbye, prison grove. I'd be an idiot if I wasn't less than pleased about being doomed. But I feel lucky or blessed to be uh, around for so long, and I still love every day. Shine on, shine the light on me. coming easily yes it comes very easily it's never happened before in my life inspiration always came painfully brutally and rarely and uh, I'm not saying it's a good trade-off but there's a lot of inspiration a lot of ideas and a lot of, and a lot of tunes coming real fast as you know Nikki yeah. does it keep the anxieties at bay does it keep the anxieties at bay no. No, the anxieties are there. I had to be a fool if I wasn't uh, you know, concerned. <laughs> but it certainly helps more than anything else. More than anything they can prescribe, it helps. And it was great, Don. That's right. Thank you. <clears throat> See you. Right. Great. It, it was what I hoped and great. Does he I'm John I'm very, very well, thank you. I had to come Jimmy, to see you. Kristen, Steffel, Timothy Hi. Smith. Hi, nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I'm in an odd kind of position. <laughs> yes, I'd say so. Oh, Spain? Glad you're doing yeah. some music. Yeah. 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 It's very distracting. It's 
correct. Yeah, then. I'm a football fan. Or a soccer really great fan to see you. Good, good to see you, too. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do the choruses first? I wanted to be happy. Something like that. Happy. I wanted to be happy. I wanted to be free. How, what do you think? It sounds beautiful. I, th I think that was okay. Yeah. Go to the next one, I think. Now and then, I like to think I, I have some uh, good-hearted uh, romantic impulses and, and express them in songs, but I'm interested in communicating what meager ideas uh, I think I have about living. I'm interested in saying goodbye to a few people. Trust me when I tell you certain things to say to people and I seem to be uh, given the opportunity to, to get them down and you know and get them recorded and, and, and get them out for which I'm very grateful <laughs> So father son arm length yeah you know the things that, that matter to me most are my two kids and uh, and making music there's a message in this bottle and I'll drink until I find it cause I've searched my soul for answers Jordan and Ariel have been such an amazing blessing and comfort to me all their lives, but certainly since I got sick, particularly. I think we have, a, you know, the gift of making the most of it. It's not fair that to die at 55. It's not not fair to die at 55. You know, it's just what it is. Are you feeling the pressure of time a lot? The pressure of time? Mm. <laughs> oh, am I feeling the pressure of time? <laughs> I take a nap and wake up and, you know, and look around and make sure I'm still here. And, uh, you know, so far, every nap I've woken up from, I've still been here. sun refused to shine never thought I'd have to pay so dearly for what was already mine just remember two Pulitzer Prizes no I only got one you only got one well it's VH1 they won't know that's right Warren two and a Nobel <laughs> A man who keeps his morphine right on the table. <laughs> to dip my head. Well. <laughs> Did you give the guy a credit card? Did you pay? Mm -hmm. He's he's like on every known painkiller, and he still beat me to the check. You know the deal. I finished the album chemo. Really? <laughs> yeah. And then all your hair's gone and everything. Oh yeah. Now that I gotta see. And you get that spook ass look. Can I come back for that? <laughs> <laughs> if you do chemo, I could I could come I could shave my skull. But I do want to see you bald. Because you know what? 
You can do it. Now he's got a good thing going. I got two words for you. Yeah. <laughs> More Think pussy? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. You've already, you're already, you're doing morphine. Tattoo. I asked one word, but it, it's two syllables. Seriously, tattoos. Of what? Just, I don't know, but like, it's something like most people regret them for the rest of their lives. Well, in your case. They should. <laughs> That's the whole idea of tattoos. Hey, your case is just like. What, maybe like a tiger? <laughs> what do you think? I think a tiger would be wonderful. Or a frog. How about a waterfall? Don't let us get sick, don't let us get old, don't let us get stupid, all right. Just make us be brave and make us play nice. Let us be together tonight. I asked a, a friend of mine who's a cancer survivor if she thought I had a good chance of dying with my boots on, and she said, yeah. So that's a hope. You know, there's certain medication that kind of masks the symptoms. Oh, God. But I have no complaints. Said, I expected it to be worse. <laughs> Life's not over. <laughs> What lines you want me to sing? All of them? Yeah. I think, I think you should take a pass at the song. I get it. I have been reading it all lately since my diagnosis. You know, my candy boy, Schopenhauer, said we love to buy books because we believe we're buying the time to read them. Isn't that grand? Should we give it a shot, Mark? Yeah, yeah, why not? I mean, the rest of my, you know, the rest of my short life has gone by while we wait for you to ask me that question. Okay, here we go. Disorder in the house. Disorder in the house. I'm not getting any vocal. One, two, three. Disorder in the house. No, no, no. Okay, one, two, three. Disorder in the house. Is that what yeah. you're Okay. Disorder in the house. I live with the losses. I watch the sun down through the porch. Yeah. Here it comes. We got some lines. Uh, you know, maybe we should uh, figure out what we need at this point. I think that's a good idea. We got a lot of good stuff. Okay. They're going to find the one line they tolerate. Disorder in the house. Time to tuck and cover. Helicopters are the right. Okay. I'm wondering if this is something about. The energy level you're now uh, in now, and maybe in the morning when you're uh, more fresh, you can like really, you know, do it better. I'm trying to throw some kind of George C. Scott gloom over the uh, situation. <laughs> no, no, it's just that we work so hard to to get to do this that we need to just do it. You know, I mean, if you can come here fresh and do it, and then do whatever you want. I mean, it's you know. Jorge, I'm dying. I don't have no fresh. I know, but also we, you know, I mean... You might understand that. Not. Fresh is I, I not in totally my vocabulary. Understand. I un totally understand that, but also we're celebrating life every day. Yours, mine, and everybody else's. We'll come in the morning fresh, bushy-tailed. You're taking this too seriously. 
That's, what do you think, boys? Do you think you go down a, a, a fiery hole a million miles long? Oh, no. Well, what do you think, boys? That's here. Hmm? Now, I'm sorry, you seen that? No, that's here. Where, where, where we go after this is way better. I have a special place for you there. Miles will come visiting, blow his horn, jam. You know, there's no fiery hole there. That's great. Something like that. I mean, I can sing a little harder or something, you know, whatever. I mean, I think I ought to be laying off on some of the lines and and just letting Warren sing them, really. I mean, I think... I love Bruce great. very much, and the thing about Springsteen is that he's exactly the person that everybody hopes he would be. It's a little bit better, you know? Come in here, Bruce. Yeah, he's just down to earth. He's stuck uh, by me through some... Uh, yeah? <laughs> through some oh, weird stuff, man. Wonderful. The real bad times. This is the Portier and the Lasso Apso and the... What? This is the Zavonian dialect here. Yeah. This is a moment. There you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 Let's get it. Let's get it solo. Let's get the solo. Solo in the house. All bets are off. I'm sprawled across the Davenport of despair. Good. Then you are him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, that was the rundown. Now let's take it. Oh, man. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. That was, that was some good stuff on that. That's glorious, man. That's glorious. Life's a lot of fun. You have to remember that and you have to keep having fun. I'm not really smoking. But I do have that Bogart to uh, notice the, uh, the hand position. Is that not filthy, guys? Yeah, it is not filthy. Oh, what you'd do if you had a month to live. <laughs> I've dramatically outlived the predictions of the doctors. I'm beginning to feel like a fraud. But I'm not a hypochondriac, honest. They told me I had a few months. Is there any kicking activity to be? Mm. It seems pretty quiet right now. You can see it now, probably, right? I'm awfully excited. Either. We've decided that Augustus's middle name will be Warren. Ariel's uh, pregnancy and the twins mean the world to me. And since I've, since I've come this far, I'm pretty darn determined to, to meet them. Shall we roll? We're going to try some. I hope so. Yeah. So. I'm fading faster than the flowers of early spring. Shadows are falling. 
And I'm running out of breath Keep me in your heart for a while If I leave you it doesn't mean I love you any less Keep me in your heart for a while When you get up in the morning And you see that crazy sun When I got the diagnosis I picked up the guitar and I found myself writing this song. There's a train leaving nightly called when all is said and done. Keep me in your heart for a while. So it's great. It really does. It, it does? Really, oh, it really yeah. does. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was when perfect. You. <laughs> On reflection, it might be a little bit of a woe is me song, but it made me realize that I knew what I was going to do with the rest of the time. Let's try the other verses. Sometimes I think that writing songs is an act of love, you know. And you write songs because you love the subject and you want to pass that feeling on. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't have any big, you know, farewell speech to make. When the winter comes, keep the fires lit, and I'll be right next to you. Engine drivers headed north. Pleasant stream, keep me in your heart for a while. These wheels keep turning, but they're running out of steam. Keep me in your heart for a while. Sha la 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 keep me in your heart for a while. Sha Party for 